can you go over a specific example as a psychiatrist that's worked with a number of different people, lots of people, of a patient you've worked with following this type of quote unquote treatment and the results they had? Yeah. So I give a lot of examples in the book. I give an example of a patient with early Alzheimer's disease, a patient with you know, lifelong depression and anxiety, um, and a patient with, with bipolar disorder, many different uh, examples in the book that I've used uh, so people can, uh, can turn to those. But I'll share an example uh, here that's not in the book. And uh, so this is a, a woman who's very graciously allowed me to share her story, but not her name. So we'll call her Bella. And she is in her 70s. And I've been working with her for a number of years now, at least four years, I believe. And in any case, um, Bella had been uh, hospitalized twice a year, uh, like clockwork, every winter and every summer for usually two to three months at a time for recurrent manic episodes, mania, uh, this part of bipolar disorder. Um, these are exceptionally high energy states, which are disruptive to a person's ability to function. So um, so uh, uh, unable to sleep, racing thoughts, obsessive worry, um, hyperactivity, things like that. And so uh, her daughter, uh, uh, over the past few years, uh, as she entered her 70s, she also started to develop some, some sy symptoms of psychosis, particularly um, unreasonable fears, what we call paranoia. Um, and about, so for example, if, uh, if she'd misplaced a personal item in her apartment and she, and she lives alone, um, she would automatically assume that somebody from her apartment building had broken into her into her apartment and stolen them. And she was really inconsolable around this. She could not be convinced that this was not the case, even when her daughter had uh, closed circuit cameras installed in her apartment to reassure her mother. It still wasn't, she was not reassured. So her daughter consulted with me about uh, whether or not a ketogenic diet might help her. I mean, she's been on just about every kind of psychiatric medication, mood stabilizers, antipsychotics, antidepressants over many, many years. Uh, and when she first consulted with me, she was taking a very high dose of uh, uh, an antipsychotic called clozapine and a sort of more moderate dose of another antipsychotic and then a very low dose of a mood stabilizing antidepressant. And she was still not well. She was still being hospitalized twice a year, um, even to the point that they had, during her most recent hospitalization before consulting with me, she'd just received a number of rounds of ECT or electroconvulsive therapy, sometimes called, it used to be called electric shock therapy, with very little um, uh, benefit. So she was still doing poorly. Um, and so we started a ketogenic diet. And within two weeks, she and her daughter both noticed a really noticeable change in her, she was in her, not only in her fears, but also in her symptoms. Um, she was able to, for example, if she misplaced something in her apartment, you know, she'd call her daughter and her daughter would say, oh, mom, you know, I think you maybe just misplaced it. And she said, oh, you're probably right. I'll go take a look. Completely different response. Um, she was waking up three hours earlier every day rather than sleeping half the day away. Um, she was able to read and remember and enjoy uh, stories. Uh, she was able to participate actively in conversations. Her mood was good uh, 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 and her sleep was excellent. And, you know, she um, she's still on this diet to this day various versions of the diet. It's an ongoing uh, story, um, but uh, she's doing quite well right now and uh, has not needed to be in the hospital twice a year anymore. I think she's been hospitalized maybe twice in the past four years. And I, I tell this story, and, and she's she's on much less medication, uh, no clozapine anymore. Um, and uh, she's on two different medications at much lower doses. And I use this example uh, because it's one of those real world examples where you don't see a person able to come off every medication they've taken and never end up back in the hospital. You don't see, um, you know, you don't see a uh, complete resolution of every symptom. What you see is dramatic and sustained improvement and the ability to reduce the number of hospitalizations uh, substantially, reduce the dosage and type and, 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 uh, the, the, and improve the uh, the types of medications the person is taking as well. Uh, and so I think that the, the reason I like this example is because this is a woman who had been um, hospitalized and, and ill and taking medications for 40 plus years. And you might think 
and I certainly did quietly to myself think this when they first consulted with me, I'm not sure how much this is going to really help. Uh, but, um, but we see cases like this, and there are cases like this published in the literature as well, the scientific literature. Um, and, uh, and, and this study that I helped publish uh, about a year and a half ago says the same thing, that you can see dramatic improvements, even remission of serious chronic mental illnesses um, uh, uh, with ketogenic diets, no matter in how long a person's been ill, no matter what medications they're taking or how many medications or what the dosages are, uh, no matter what the diagnosis is. Um, the study that I helped publish about a year and a half ago, there were people with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, severe major depression, on an average of five psychiatric medications, ill for an average of 10 years already. Um, and, and all of them improved on a ketogenic diet if they were able to stay on it for more than two weeks, which most of them were. And 64% of them left the hospital on less psychiatric medication. 44% of them achieved clinical remission from serious mental illness. These dietary interventions are powerful brain medicine. And I think that, that stories like this and studies like this really give tremendous reason for hope almost no matter who you are or where you're at in your mental health journey, I, if you haven't tried these types of interventions, they're really worth exploring and learning more about. I think that whole piece that you mentioned there is just so important. And, and thank you for sharing all that. Coming back to Bella, you mentioned 40 years of suffering before she made this dietary switch. Do you find, though, if somebody comes to see you after, say, a year or two versus 40, any differences in how quickly they get better or how long they stay better? We know that there's hope there for the people that have been in this for a long time, but talk about the difference there when you're working with people. Yeah, you know, it's hard. I mean, I've never really tallied it up, but my but my... My general sense, because I work with people of all ages, I've worked with people in people in their eighties. I've worked with people, who, you know, everything from eighteen to 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 eighty eight, right? In terms of my nutrition practice, and and I work with all comers. Basically, I'm a general adult psychiatrist. I don't specialize in any particular type of illness. I don't specialize in bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. If you've got PTSD, ADHD, OCD, uh, eating disorders, uh, early dementia, bipolar disorder, psychosis, whatever the issue is, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, I will try to help you. And there's the, the, the plus side of that is that I have a lot of experience using these diets in lots of different types of situations with people of lots of different ages. And so what I notice is that it does tend to be the people who are metabolically healthier and the people who are, especially if they're physically fit or younger, they do tend to be more metabolically flexible and they, they often will respond to the diet um, uh, a little bit more readily, but not always. I mean, I definitely have had, I can think, you know, I can think of, a, you know, a few people who, you know, were in their twenties, early thirties who didn't respond to the diet at all. I mean, the diet does not work for everybody. It certainly doesn't. It, it helps most people but it does not work for everybody. Um, there are definitely other factors involved, of course. Um, but uh, I really do believe that, the, that, that a food-first approach to mental health and in physical health makes sense because once you see what that can do for you first before you explore other, other options um, that you can then add on to that treatment, other maybe more sophisticated options that might be necessary or deeper testing, these are really simple strategies that make a lot of biological sense. Um, and I think it's a great place to start. So, um, and that's where I start. And so that's why I can tell you that most people do benefit. Not everybody gets all the way better, but most people get enough better that they want to continue eating this way long-term. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. If you've got PTSD, ADHD, OCD, eating disorders, early dementia, whatever the issue is, I will try to help you. My definition of a brain healthy diet is it has to nourish the brain, protect the brain, energize the brain. You can see dramatic improvement.